Master Kulits, Episode 33-36 The air crackles with anticipation and the hum of hundreds of live feeds, all streaming from the very heart of turmoil, the school grounds. Today, the buzz isn't just about academics or sports. Today, it's about Enzo. Enzo, the enigma, whom they hadn't seen in days, had begun a live stream that got too wild for the internet to contain, and had the school alley bustling with students anxious to witness the fight between him and Damon. I can't wait to see Enzo bring that Damon to his knees today. Good thing we made it in time to see all the action in real time. This is even better than his usual food and women content. Indeed, flanked by a posse that buzzed with energy, Enzo strode through the crowd. Each member of his entourage beamed with a fighter's spirit, ready to stand ground should challenges arise. Enzo's face, a mask of calm determination, hinted at no fear, but as his eyes caught sight of a familiar figure among the faceless crowd, his steps faltered. Jasper? Jasper, the one name Enzo never expected to encounter today. Not here, not in the flesh, standing mere feet away. The man whose history with Enzo was woven with threads of rivalry and unresolved tensions. Enzo, a little bird told me you now call yourself the gangster around here? m m mister Stewart, to what do I owe this pleasure? Why am I here? Why am I here? This is the Eastern District. And do you know what that means for you? No one dared to speak. No one even dared to breathe too loudly. Jasper's presence commanded the scene, his voice a harbinger of dread. I know this is Mr. Stewart's territory, and I'll get out of here right away. Get out of here? Do you not also want to collect your dues from me like you do to the other small businesses around here? Surely you think I'm one of the others you can easily mess with? Go teach those losers a lesson. Jasper's reputation preceded him, a pillar of the Eastern District, known for his dealings fair and foul. Yet today, no negotiations, no talks. Today, it was only about Damon. What a smart man. Jasper, who had always known more than he let on, recognized a shifting tide. The Laurier family, once a name of weight, now just a whisper on the wind. No need for mercy, not today. As the alley swarmed with onlookers, none dared step forward. The street, Jasper's arena now, was no place for the faint-hearted. As the echoes of confrontation died down, the air was heavy with the scent of the aftermath. The ground, a grim canvas splattered with the harsh strokes of violence. Let's go see how Damon has been beaten. Don't get too close to them. It's enough to shoot a video from a distance. Why does the man in the suit look so scary? He doesn't look like a university student. As curiosity drew them closer, the stark reality of the scene unfolded before their eyes. The ground, a tapestry of blood and defeat. Among the fallen men lay Enzo, a broken figure sprawled across the concrete, his phone still live-streaming the scene to the world. His body trembled, not with cold, but with fear. Damon, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. I shouldn't have offended you. I will never dare to provoke you again. Damn, what the hell just happened? Yeah, definitely not the way I saw this going. But answers were as absent as the figures of Melanie and Damon. Both vanished as if swallowed by the very shadows of the alley. No one left to recount the tale, no one to blame. Away from the grim scene of the alley, a starkly different turmoil brew on the other side of the university grounds. Here, beneath the looming shadows of the sports grounds, Damon, Melanie, and Tiffany found a moment's respite, each panting from the exertion of a hurried escape. What are... what are you doing? <sighs> I was just about to talk to Jasper when you dragged me away. Do you know who that person is? That's Jasper Stewart, a famous gangster in Hillwood. Of course I know who Jasper is. I'm the one who called him over. You called him? Damon, please don't go to the Eastern District to sell skewers anymore. It's too dangerous and chaotic there. Tiffany's words carried the weight of genuine concern. By the way, we have our graduation party tonight, and I'll be performing in the last highlight show. I have to go prepare. All right, see you there. As Tiffany disappeared into the distance, Damon and Melanie were left with the echoes of her warnings. 
The impending graduation party loomed, a moment of celebration shadowed by the day's dark events. As the evening approached, the venue for the graduation party buzzed with a restrained excitement. In this digital era, attendance is not just a physical affair, but a virtual mandate. Every student, whether through computer or smartphone, is an eyewitness to the festivities. Outside the bustling grounds, a BMW pulled up smoothly to the curb. Tiffany, hesitant at first, eyed the vehicle warily. I shouldn't, but I'm already late. Decision made, Tiffany slipped into the passenger seat, greeted by a familiar face. The same man who shared skewers with her and Damon not long ago. Back at the stall, Damon and Melanie worked quickly to tidy up. The remnants of the day's chaos seemed a world away as they secured their small enterprise. Melanie went back home while Damon decided to go to the graduation party. The weight of the day's events hung heavy on Damon. With a deep sigh, he fished out his car keys from his pocket, the metal glinting under the streetlights. Damon's relief at the day's end was cut short by a surprising sight. As he approached his car, he found Abigail, conspicuously absent from the graduation festivities, standing beside his prized GTR. Abigail's posture stiffened as Damon stepped closer. Damon Hemsworth, what are you doing here? There's only one car in the alley, so what do you think I'm here for? You're here to take pictures next to someone else's luxury car? <laughs> That's so sad. But this is my car, and I want to drive home. Abigail burst into mocking laughter, her voice echoing off the alley walls. <laughs> Damon Hemsworth, I really hate you more with each day. I knew you sucked from the very beginning when you stole food from my store, but now you're just getting worse. You're a compulsive liar. How could this be your car? Do you know what this car is? It's a limited edition GTR. I bet you could only afford a screw for this car, or else you wouldn't have to steal food from my supermarket. And just so you know, this is my boyfriend's car. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Get out of my way now. I don't have time for your bullshit. Leave my boyfriend's car alone and stay away from me. I don't know who your boyfriend is, but he's the loser for lying to you about his car. Damon Hemsworth, you need help. I think you're delusional. <sighs> I am telling you the truth. This car is really mine. Okay, you know what? Let's wage a bet. If this car is yours, I'll... Uh, I'll strip. But if this car doesn't belong to you, you better get out of here and get lost from my sight forever. As the alley's dim lights cast long shadows, Abigail, flushed with indignation, sees the moment Elijah steps into the fray. Her voice, sharp with accusation, cut through the cool evening air. Elijah, thank goodness you're finally here. This man claims the car is his. Please show him he's mistaken. Elijah Crane, caught off guard by the sudden spotlight, fumbled awkwardly in his pockets. His smile didn't reach his eyes as he feigned a search for keys he knew he didn't have. Damn it. I was in such a hurry I actually forgot to pick my car keys. Elijah muttered, his voice a mix of frustration and feigned regret. Abigail's anticipation dissolved into dismay, her face clouding over like a storm ready to burst. How can you forget them? Go back and get them now. But Elijah, tethered to a lie he couldn't sustain, hesitated. His reluctance was palpable as he proposed an escape from the escalating tension. It's getting late. Why don't we stop this back and forth and just head to the party? I'll drive the car away tomorrow morning. He suggested quickly, covering insincerity with a nervous laugh. The scene hung in a delicate balance, the truth teetering on the edge of exposure. Elijah's evasion, a thin veil over his deception, barely concealed the reality of the situation. As Abigail and he stood, locked in a moment of confrontation and confusion, the night held its breath, waiting for the facade to crumble. But as Elijah suggested a retreat, Damon, with a calm certainty, pressed the car key, the GTR responding with a confirming chirp. It was a moment of vindication, a silent rebuke to the accusations cast upon him. In the dim light of the alley, the truth became apparent, if only to those willing to see it. 
Abigail's challenge, brash and bold, crumbled as the reality of ownership was undeniably demonstrated. The real loser of the night was not Damon, but misunderstanding and misplaced pride. The sound of the car echoed through the alley where it was parked. Abigail jumped up in response to the sound and nearly fell off the car. She regained her calm, hugged Elijah, and said, I knew this car belonged to you, and not this imposter who just pretends to be rich. Abigail turned to Damon to torment him further when she noticed the keys in Damon's hands. Damon made it clear who had the wheel, literally. Abigail immediately removed herself from Elijah's clutches and looked him straight in the eyes, imploring. Elijah, this car isn't yours? Elijah scanned Damon, head to toe. Elijah was wealthy, but even he couldn't purchase such an expensive car, of which only 50 were built in the entire world. He didn't want to lose face in front of everyone, and glancing at Damon, he realized he couldn't afford the car either. Even though Damon possessed the keys, Elijah had the upper hand at the moment. How would he turn things around and save face in front of his girlfriend? Give me my keys, you crook. He barked at Damon and then looked at Abigail. Isn't this the man who stole food from your family stores? This measly man can't afford a decent meal and he has the guts to pretend to own this car? My car, give me my keys right now before I call the cops. He was going to grab Damon's collar, but seeing his calm demeanor made him uncomfortable. So he took a step back. Damon smiled. Keeping the keys in his pocket, he stated, Oh, I didn't even think of it. Let's call the cops. Go ahead. And while you're at it, Abigail, honey, I'm sure you'll want to sit in the car, right? Don't honey me. And yes, I'm going to sit in the car that belongs to my boyfriend. I'm warning you, boy. Cut out the act and give me back my keys. Hell, I'll even throw in some money as a reward for being a good boy if you act like one. He took out a few thousand dollars and waved it in front of Damon's face. You see this? This can all be yours, just give me my keys. Elijah was sure that this car was not Damon's, and the keys were likely just picked up by him from someone. Besides, if he could spend a few thousand dollars buying Damon's keys, he would earn massively. Abigail, why don't you ask your classmate to return the keys to me? Elijah said in a commanding tone. Abigail ignored Elijah's words and let the men do the battling as she crawled into the luxurious and expensive car, finally able to touch the high-quality seats. Elijah pulled out his phone to call the cops when they heard a welcome recording as Abigail sat in the driver's seat. Welcome, Mr. Hemsworth. Adjusting the settings according to your comfort. Enjoy. The seat reclined, and the lights in the car changed to a warmer tone. Elijah was still on the phone when the officers answered. 911, how may I help you? Elijah realized he couldn't bluff anymore, and he cut the call immediately. Abigail looked at both of them. Now ashamed, she stepped out of the car. Her shame quickly changed to anger when she questioned Elijah. It was getting tough for Damon to keep a low profile for long, but he knew he couldn't stay humble for long if these dimwits continued to bully him. Abigail, how can you be so stupid? He has clearly tricked you. Elijah Crane, what the fuck is going on? The ruse was almost up and Elijah couldn't hold his bluff. A few days ago, he had said that he owned an expensive car, so finding this car was a fortuitous occasion for him. All the reasons you gave me, then excuses for not being able to take me for a ride in your car? Was that all a lie? Elijah Crane, I'm going to ask you again. Why did you lie about this car? Elijah didn't dare say a word, but the truth was evident. Can you really stoop that low as to pretend to own someone else's car? Are you really that cheap? The words struck like shards of glass. Elijah, seeing no way out of this dilemma, decided to turn the tables and find a scapegoat. He responded fiercely. Yeah? So what? Sluts like you are the reason we men have to pretend. Hey, watch your language, calm down. Don't you see that pool of blood on the road there? Damon said, now that he had the situation under control, Elijah was impatient, and now raising his voice, he rebuked. Abigail Holland, why is money so important to you as a university student? 
So you don't want to be with me unless I have a limited edition GTR? Screw you, you gold digger. Now that his lie had been exposed, Elijah walked away. Abigail was shattered as she stood frozen, unable to move or react. She couldn't believe that she was cheated and dumped all in the same night. Abigail, Abigail Holland. Damon waved his hands in front of her, but she didn't seem to respond. Pitying her condition, he said, It's late. Why don't I drop you home? Abigail came back to her senses and realizing what had happened, she replied angrily, No, it's fine. The night was silent, but Damon sensed unease. He could see Abigail had been treated badly, and despite their strained relationship, he wanted to console her. Isn't he just a part of your life? A beautiful girl like you will have men fall on your feet, and I'm sure that there will be men out there who will suit you better. Damon's words didn't conform to her at all, but acted as gasoline to fire. Don't act as if you know me! Well, I do know that he fooled you to date him, and now you'll miss Tiffany's show. You should really set your priorities straight. Abigail's eyes burned with anger. Damon expected her to have an outburst, but he saw a different side to Abigail that day. All of a sudden, Abigail rushed to the corner. She sat on the curb while hugging her legs and cried pathetically. The more she cried, the more she lost control of her emotions. After a torrent of tears, Abigail's gaze lifted, her eyes locking onto Damon's GTR, a symbol of wealth that seemed incongruous in the midst of their emotional turmoil. Is this car really yours? Yes. Damon's voice carried the weight of exhaustion, his patience tested by Abigail's repeated inquiries. Then, uh, you're rich? Pretty okay. At least I won't starve to death. Damon's humility belied the truth of his wealth, a truth obscured by his modest demeanor. Then, it wasn't you who stole from my supermarket? Did you see it was me, with your own eyes? I didn't see his face, but from the back he looked just like you. Do you think I need to steal food when I drive this car? But I didn't know! I thought you were poor! That doesn't mean I would be a thief. Anyway, what's his deal? Damon asked, gesturing towards Elijah's direction. He seems to be taking advantage of you. I can help you deal with him. Damon's sincerity cut through Abigail's doubts, his offer of assistance a beacon of hope in her moment of despair. He wondered why Elijah would cheat on a college girl like her. Moreover, what made her breakdown? <sighs> My family is drowning in debt. They never let it get to me, but I saw that they were struggling with the debt. So I wanted to help. Around the same time I met Elijah, he handles multiple businesses and also invests in a couple of companies. Elijah promised to help and invest in our supermarket as long as I was with him, but his intentions weren't what they seemed. Abigail's confession laid bare the depths of her vulnerability, her trust betrayed by false promises. Not even in her dreams did she think she would bear her mind like this in front of a fellow university chap let alone in front of Damon. I had no idea. Damon was already investing in her supermarket and owned the car she wanted. Whatever Elijah promised her, he was already doing without expecting anything in return. Damon's shock mirrored Abigail's own, their shared pain binding them in an unexpected alliance. Damon still wondered if the reason for her outburst might have been due to her losing her virginity to Elijah. Asking such a direct question made him feel uncomfortable. But before he could say anything, she said, Damon, I misjudged you. I thought you were the one who stole from my supermarket. That's the reason I was deliberately keeping you away from Tiffany. Damon understood Abigail's mindset behind doing what was good for her best friend Tiffany. After wiping her tears, Abigail took out a ticket from her pocket and handed it over to Damon. Please, accept this ticket to Tiffany's graduation party as a token of my gratitude. Abigail's offering held the weight of reconciliation, her gesture a bridge between past misunderstandings and future forgiveness. Hurry up, the show's about to start. Thank you. Damon's acceptance marked a turning point, his path converging with Tiffany's once more. As Damon made his way to the graduation party, anticipation hung heavy in the air, the promise of Tiffany's performance drawing crowds to the venue. 
Damon checked the roster of performances and he saw that Tiffany was going to sing Because of Love with Nicholas James. Inside the Academic Exchange Center, tension mounted as the audience awaited Tiffany's performance, their murmurs a symphony of anticipation. Nicholas was the student union's vice president, and his family was quite wealthy, so that he could make arrangements for the schedule. That night, Nicholas and Tiffany also appeared at the skewer's stall. At this time, the purpose of singing Because of Love was already self-explanatory. Nicholas was going to confess to Tiffany at the graduation party. At the door, Nicholas had already arranged a bouquet of roses. Once he was successful in his pursuit of Tiffany, it would undoubtedly cause a commotion in all of Hillwood University. And then, as Tiffany took the stage, her voice filled the room, a melody that stirred Damon's soul. As Damon entered the venue, everyone started murmuring. I told you Damon would come. I don't believe how foolish he is. Does he really think he has a chance with Tiffany? Maybe he has some hope and thinks that with time, Tiffany would give him a chance. Everyone, hush. Let me introduce the most perfect couple of our university. The most anticipated duo, Tiffany and Nicholas. Tiffany saw Damon and her eyes glimmered. She couldn't believe that Damon actually came to watch her perform. The background music slowly began creating a stir around. Our goddess, Tiffany Vandergeld, is going to sing. I'm really envious of Nicholas who gets a chance to sing with Tiffany. This is a love song between the two of them. All of a sudden, Tiffany started singing, but the song wasn't the one people were expecting. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Tiffany's unexpected choice of song sent shockwaves through the crowd, her words laden with hidden meaning. Everyone wondered why Tiffany was singing a children's song. For Damon, the truth behind Tiffany's song was clear. A message of love whispered amidst the chaos of their shared history. He had asked her some days back if she knew how to fold paper stars, so she had sung a song referring to that. Nicholas, who had been preparing to sing the song because of love, was stunned, and the microphone in his hand even fell to the ground. Tiffany's strange behavior made him unable to sing at all. However, it seemed that Tiffany did not care about it, as she picked up the microphone and whispered, Damon, how does it sound? And as Tiffany's voice faded into the night, Damon stood in the shadows, his gaze locked with hers. The air crackled with anticipation as Tiffany, the goddess of the Academic Exchange Center, defied convention by serenading Damon in front of a stunned audience. Her addressing Damon while on stage sent shockwaves through the crowd, leaving onlookers in a tumult of envy and disbelief. Tiffany descended from the stage, her confidence unwavering as she approached Damon. Moreover, their faint hearts were instantly shattered by Tiffany's words. I knew you'd come, Damon. Let's get out of here. The crowd was shocked. There was no way Damon was about to take their goddess with himself. Damon, caught off guard by Tiffany's boldness, stammered a reply. Um, where should we go? How about you give me a ride home? Damon, still trying to process the evening's events, nodded in agreement. As they left the academic exchange center, Damon and Tiffany's departure left everyone in shock. Tiffany held Damon's hand as they walked out, further drawing eyeballs. It seemed that Damon, once the university loser, was now dating Tiffany. Man, Damon's lucky. Make this make sense, someone. What's so special about Damon? Damon himself was surprised at Tiffany's gesture. She really does like me, huh? Damon wondered. Once underestimated, he found himself in a surprising new relationship with Tiffany. Here, take the keys. You're driving. Once they were in the parking lot, Tiffany handed Damon the car keys, a simple gesture that spoke volumes about their budding connection. Sure thing. Tiffany and Damon listened to music on the 20-minute drive home and drove in companionable silence. When they finally reached Tiffany's place, Tiffany smiled at Damon. Thanks, Damon. It means a lot to me that you came to see me perform. I'll see you tomorrow. Damon smiled warmly at Tiffany and nodded. After dropping Tiffany off, Damon sought out Thomas, 
When he reached Thomas's place, he noticed that Thomas didn't look himself. Are you okay, Thomas? Just not feeling myself today. Thomas, trying to maintain composure, brushed off Damon's concern with a smile. Oh, nothing to worry about. He handed Damon a folder filled with detailed investment plans. Here's what we worked on last time. Ah, this looks promising. Damon took over the investment plan and looked through them. Soon, his eyes focused on a TV reality show project. Thomas, I've seen this investment proposal last time. Let's invest in this TV show. Damon had seen the proposal of this TV show and found it quite intriguing. The program crew would recruit 10 people randomly and give them a sum of money to let them pretend to be millionaires. The contestants had to perform tasks where they had to convince people they were millionaires. The winner of the show would then walk away with a huge money prize. The show production costs were quite high. This show is expensive. Thomas's frown was obvious, and he didn't show much enthusiasm for the idea. But Damon was adamant. I know it's an expensive show, but once the show is on the air, there will be a huge income. People are going to love the show. Thomas still looked unconvinced. He remained skeptical, his concern evident on his face. How about this, Thomas? Sell two of my cars and use that money to invest in the show. Thomas nodded reluctantly, though his demeanor betrayed lingering doubts. Wow, you're really out of it today. You're in a bad state. Thomas clearly seemed to have something weighing on his mind. Uh, maybe the cold has affected my judgment. Uh, don't worry, Mr. Hemsworth. I'll get well soon. Later that night, Tiffany was busy completing an assignment when she received an unexpected call from Abigail. Tiffany Vandergeld, you are crazy. Don't you know that the whole school has been talking about you deliberately singing the wrong song tonight? Especially Nicholas. He was so embarrassed that I feel sorry for him. Um, and do you not have to say anything about my leaving with Damon? Are you not hating on him anymore? <laughs> of course I hate him. That's never changing. But I think I've misjudged him. He wasn't the one who stole food from my supermarket either. I was mistaken. That's the reason I gave him the ticket to your show tonight, by the way. I knew it would mean a lot to you to have him there. Abigail was covering the truth. She had actually not been in the mood to watch Tiffany's show that night, especially after the whole Elijah drama, but she might as well come out looking magnanimous. Now that we're even, can I beg you to stay away from Damon in the future? You can do so much better, T. Not only did Tiffany not listen to Abigail's advice, but she also sent a message to Damon the following day, telling him that her mother wanted to meet him. Tiffany invited Damon over for dinner to her house and also told him she was taking him shopping that afternoon. Damon stared at his phone screen. Wow, Tiffany is moving quickly. Later that afternoon, after taking Damon to 10 stores at the mall, Tiffany finally settled on an expensive suit for him. As Tiffany came out of the store, she found Damon deep in conversation with a girl she hadn't seen before. The girl held a microphone, and it seemed like she was interviewing Damon for something. The girl then thanked Damon and walked away. Hey, who was that? Damon smiled and replied. It's nothing. She's just someone from a TV show. The girl was actually a part of the production crew of the reality show he had invested in. Damon had listened intently as she had explained the rules of the show to him. She had told him that as a contestant, if he pretended to be rich, he would get an amount of $300,000 to convince people that he was wealthy. One contestant in the show would get eliminated every week. However, after entering the finals, the bonus amount would not only be accumulated, but also double. Damon accepted the invitation to be a contestant on the show. After all, this was his project. If he could make a debut in the show, he could increase the show's popularity. Okay, I've gotta go. Don't be late today. Tiffany said in a rush, her voice infused with urgency and excitement as she tiptoed and planted a quick kiss on Damon's cheek. Then, with a playful grin, she darted away like a fleeting shadow. Damon remained rooted to the spot, his expression a mix of confusion and introspection. 
Tiffany's actions left him pondering the complexities of their budding relationship. Memories of Jessica flickered through his mind, but this new connection with Tiffany felt refreshingly different, hinting at something more profound. Maybe this is what a real relationship feels like. Eventually, Damon snapped out of his daze and dialed Thomas, his trusted mentor and confidant, seeking a bit of reassurance before facing the unknowns of the Vandergeld family's dinner. Thomas, it's Damon. I'm heading over to Tiffany's house tonight. Any advice? Take a deep breath. You've got this. With renewed resolve, Damon navigated the familiar route to the Vandergeld family's elegant villa, where an unexpected scene awaited him. Mom, why did you invite him here? Didn't I tell you I was bringing my boyfriend? Tiffany's tone held a hint of frustration as she confronted her mother about Nicholas's presence. Tiffany's mother, a pillar of grace and authority, turned to address her daughter's concerns with maternal firmness. What's wrong with me calling him over? The James family and ours go way back, Tiffany. Remember, you and Nicholas were practically promised to each other before you were born. And about last night at the university, Nicholas was quite forgiving, wasn't he? You embarrassed him by singing a completely different song. I expect you to apologize to him tonight. Tiffany's mother's words resonated, but Tiffany remained guarded, her thoughts swirling with uncertainty about her family's expectations. Nicholas handed a beautiful bouquet of roses to Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany, it was my fault last night. I shouldn't have chosen that song without consulting you. I just wanted to express myself, but I, I see now that it was a misstep. Please forgive me. I'm not angry with you, Nicholas, but maybe it's best if you leave for now. Tiffany, is there anyone else coming to dinner? Yes, my boyfriend is coming, Nicholas. I'm sure you can figure out who he is. Nicholas felt the weight of disappointment settle over him his previous pretense unraveling in the face of Tiffany's unwavering stance. Despite years of following Tiffany, he sensed a finality in her demeanor that dashed any lingering hopes of friendship. <sighs> Damn. Tiffany walked up to the kitchen to help her mother. Faith, Tiffany's mother, played the gracious hostess, setting the table and welcoming everyone with an air of acceptance. She had told Tiffany that she looked forward to meeting Damon. To her, the most important thing was her daughter's happiness. Well, let's sit down. Our guest will be here soon. Observing the scene, Nicholas couldn't contain his mounting frustration. With a determined air, he confronted Tiffany's mother, his words tinged with accusation and intensity. Mrs. Vandergeld, I have something important to tell you. What's the matter, Nicholas? Damon Hemsworth is a very disgusting person. There are so many rumors about him at the university. Damon is very hypocritical. He likes to pretend he's rich, but he's actually quite poor. He owes over $10,000 to his roommate, uh, Aiden, who's struggling to make ends meet and hasn't asked Damon for repayment. Goodness. And, and there's more. Damon had a girlfriend, but she wanted to leave him because of his terrible behavior. He even attempted to assault her. Uh, not only that, but Damon also secretly hooked up with a, a mute girl. He took her virginity. He's a real player. Nicholas stood up excitedly and continued. Of course, this isn't even the tip of the iceberg. There's more? Wait till you hear this. It was Damon who gave Tiffany the fake Californium, which almost made the Vandergeld family go bankrupt and caused so much scandal. Faith's disbelief grew with each accusation, her eyes widening at the mention of Damon's alleged misdeeds, especially the troubling incident involving Tiffany's birthday. This can't be. Tiffany, caught off guard and wanting to defend Damon, found herself at a loss for words in the face of such damning claims. Mom, it's not like that. Faith, determined to deal with the situation, instructed Tiffany with authority. Go and sit next to Nicholas now. Just then, the sound of a car pulling up outside interrupted the tense moment. It was Damon, arriving at the Vandergeld family's home. With Damon's arrival, tension mounted as the truth hung in the air, awaiting resolution.
Faith glared at Tiffany. She didn't want Damon to set foot in her house. This all must be a misunderstanding. No way. Nicholas snorted before he continued. <laughs> I'm the vice president of the university's student union. I know how much money Damon owes Aiden. Damon is a loser. But in fact, Aiden is the real loser. Damon has owed him so much money, he is embarrassed to ask Damon to return his debt. As tension thickened in the room, Tiffany prepared to defend Damon against Nicholas's accusations. But before she could speak, Faith rose to her feet with a solemn promise. Nicholas, don't worry, we will handle this matter well. By this time, Damon was already at the door of the dining room. He had been let in by the housekeeper. He had heard Nicholas's accusations. With a steely gaze, Faith turned her attention to Damon, her expression unreadable. Damon Hemsworth, is what Nicholas said true? Damon had indeed borrowed money a few times from his friend Aiden. Damon had intended to return the money to Aiden, now that he was rich. But the last few weeks had been so eventful, he had forgotten all about it. Hello, Miss Vandergeld? Um, it's true that I borrowed money from Aiden, but... Damon's explanation fell on deaf ears as Faith's patience wore thin. She didn't want this despicable boy in her house anymore. Get out of my house, Damon. <laughs> you see? Get out, Damon. No one wants you here. This is my house, Nicholas. You leave. I'm doing this for your own good, Tiffany. Get out! Why are you so blind, Tiffany? Can't you see what kind of a person he is? He's a hundred times better than you'll ever be. You're making a big mistake, Tiffany. You'll regret this. I'd rather regret standing up for someone I believe in than regret staying silent. When Nicholas didn't rise from his seat, Tiffany rose. With determination blazing in her eyes, Tiffany walked up to Damon and took his hand, ready to leave. You'll never find anyone who cares for you like I do, Tiffany. I don't need someone who claims to care while tearing others down. Goodbye, Nicholas. But as they moved to leave, Faith grabbed Tiffany by the arm to stop her. Ouch! Mom, that hurt! Stop grabbing my arm! Look at the manner in which you're behaving. How can you speak so rudely to Nicholas? He's our guest. Tiffany Vandergeld, what's wrong with you today? Tiffany bit her lip. She began tearing. When she invited Damon over, she hadn't expected the night to turn out this way. Faith continued chiding her daughter. How can you defend Damon after all that he's done, Tiffany? Nicholas is trying to protect you. But mom, Damon... But before Tiffany could explain, Nicholas interjected, his voice dripping with self-righteousness. <laughs> Mrs. Vandergeld, Tiffany needs to see the truth. Damon is not worthy of her. Nicholas is right, Tiffany. Tears streamed down Tiffany's cheeks as she struggled to explain the situation to her mother. But mom, you don't understand. In the midst of the emotional turmoil, Damon remained silent, his eyes darting between the conflicted faces of those around him. I never wanted this. Damon thought, shocked by the scene unfolding in front of him. Nicholas, emboldened by Faith's apparent support, rose to his feet, his posture exuding confidence. Uh, Mrs. Vandergeld, you shouldn't blame Tiffany. The university accepts uh, anyone these days, no matter how unqualified. It's easy for a nice girl like her to encounter scumbags. Faith's anger subsided slightly. She glanced at Damon, noticing his expensive clothes, a clear sign of Tiffany's financial support. Yet, she couldn't understand his appeal. Seeing his moment, Nicholas offered to deal with Damon. With his family's influence, he could easily expose Damon's flaws. <laughs> Damon Hemsworth, get lost. The rest of the Vandergeld family will be joining us later. You'll even be more embarrassed if you stay. Here's some money for a taxi. Hurry up and leave before you embarrass Mrs. Vandergeld even more. Just look at the mess you've created, Damon. If you had any self-respect, you'd leave now. You're clearly unwelcome. I refuse to leave, Nicholas. Not when Tiffany needs me. Fine. If you won't leave willingly, I'll make you. But Damon stood his ground. Fueled by a quiet determination, he refused to back down. He couldn't tolerate Tiffany's tears any longer. 
Nicholas's wealth and power meant nothing compared to her pain. With a threatening gesture, Nicholas reached for his phone, ready to summon security. Just as tensions reached a boiling point, the sound of approaching footsteps interrupted the standoff. Teresa, the enigmatic beauty of the Vandergeld family, swept into the room, her presence commanding attention. No, you can't let him go. Faith and Nicholas, taken aback by Teresa's sudden appearance, watched in stunned silence as she surveyed the room. Teresa looked at Damon from head to toe. He stays. Teresa, why did you come back? You said you had to work late tonight and wouldn't make it for dinner. We can't let Damon leave. Why? Because you have to apologize to Damon first. 